have uh, Rabbi Lamb's book open about festivals of faith, about, excuse me, the holiday of Shavuot. So I was looking through his book and I saw he had an essay about Har Sinai, about Mount Sinai on Shavuot. And I figured, let me, uh, let me see what he says here. And I'm going to share with you what he says, even though, <coughs> excuse me, even though if you read what he says, you probably say, he probably would have said that I should not have gone to Saudi Arabia to go to Mount Sinai last week. So we'll see what he says here. So this is what Rabbi Lamb has to say about Har Sinai. He says, it says in preparation for the giving of the Torah at Har Sinai, Hashem tells Moshe, make a boundary around the mountain. And when you make this boundary, you have to be careful to tell people that they're not allowed to touch the mountain. Whoever touches the mountain, human or animal will die. But right afterwards, right after Har Sinai, it says, When the ram's horn sounds, they can come up the mountain. So we're not allowed to go on Mount Sinai until after the revelation and the shofar blasts and then we're allowed to go up the mountain. So Rabbi Lam cites the commentary of called Meshachach, Mara Meir Simcha Kohen of Dvinsk, who says that while Hashem in the Torah is very severe telling people you have to stay away from the mountain during the revel revelation, right away we have permission to go up, right when the uh, right when the revelation ends. Usually you need to take some time before you can do something like go to the, go to the mikvah or wait seven days. Yet here, right when the shofar blasts, immediately they can go up the mountain. Why is it that Hashem wanted to say that it was permitted right away after we were told it was prohibited? So the Meshachachma says, that the reason is that it's a protest against the pagan mentality. So Rabbi Lam argues that every religion knows this concept of holiness, which we call Kedusha. The, the, Rabbi Lam says the pagan identifies Kedusha, holiness, as a magical idea. Whereas Kedusha is conceived as something independent of man. However, for the Jew, it's different. For the Jew, Kedusha is not magical. It's not absolute. Holiness comes about only when man and God meet. And then when the encounter between man and God is done, then the Kedusha vanishes. So when man and God met at Sinai, it was holy. But when that encounter ended, the holiness departed. So that's what Hashem was teaching us. When the shofar sounds, then this mountain is just like, this is, is just like any other mountain. This is what Rabbi Lamb writes. When the shofar sounds indicating the end of revelation, then let them scale the heights of the mountain and see that this is a mountain like all other mountains with vegetation and foliage. By the way, I, when I was there, I saw no vegetation and no foliage. I saw nothing. I didn't even see a flower. I saw one bird. That's it. And, um, and insects and wild beasts. I saw a scorpion. Actually, I did see some like goats being herded there, but they weren't wild. Maybe they were sheep. There's nothing inherent in the mountain to make it different from other desert mountains. And that was accurate. The only thing that I saw that was a little different was it had a little bit of a weird shape to it on the top. Let the Israelites appreciate 
that God did not reveal himself at Mount Sinai because Mount Sinai is holy, but Mount Sinai is holy only because and when God revealed himself on it. So that's the point. Immediately we're supposed to go up to show that the holiness only comes from the fact that man met God over there. And when the giving of the Torah is over, when God has left and man has returned from the great historic encounter, the holiness disappears. And Rabbi Lam writes this line. I wish, you know, I met, I spoke to Rabbi Lam many times. He writes, to this very day, we do not consider Mount Sinai holy. First of all, I would say, with all due respect to Rabbi Lam, a blessed memory, he's correct that we don't consider it holy. But to be fair, the Torah does say it is Admat Kodesh. The Torah does call Mount Sinai holy. God tells Moshe, remove the shoes because you're standing on holy ground. But that's when the, bur the bush was burning. He says, Rabbi Lam writes here, there's a Christian monastery on Mount Sinai, but no shul. Well, that's, he was, I believe here, um, Miss, I mean, how do I say it without being disrespectful? Uh, he was adopting the position, which most scholars today don't agree with. He was arguing that Mount Sinai is on, Saint, is on that is where St. Catherine's Monastery is in Egypt. But I don't think that's the case. I think it's in Jebel Harb where there's no monastery no shul, no church, and no mosque. But anyway, his point is that the Mount Sinai is not inherently holy. Its holiness only came from that encounter with God and man. And I, I agree with that, except I, argue, I believe that having gone there, I feel the holiness from it because it's not holy in the sense of the way the Temple Mount is holy, but it's only in the sense of what we're inspired by when we see that place. When we come to that place, we're inspired by the fact that our ancestors stood here and received the Torah. Something great happened there. Like if you go to a place where your ancestors did something great, you're inspired beyond words by it. And you recognize that the, that the, that the parts of the Torah took place here. It's a very inspiring idea. So while Rabbi Lamb is correct, in the uh, abstract, I still found this place to be a very holy place. Let me stop here and see if uh, anybody has any comments.